Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is your Apostle Radic with Converting Souls Apostolic Ministries. And we are coming together for Prophetess King's session as she begins with the life of Christ. I pray that your eyes and ears of understanding be opened and enlightened. In Jesus' name. Without further ado, here is Prophetess King. Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name. As I begin to teach this session, I pray that you will even open up my eyes even more so to comprehend and understand what thus saith the Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. The topic is looks of Christ. Let us go to Mark chapter 3, verse 5. And when he had looked round about, on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts. He said to the, to the man, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was restored whole as the other. It was his Otherwise, his hands was completely healed. Okay. Can you give that scripture again? Um, Mark chapter 3, verse 5. And the topic? I'm sorry. The looks of Christ. He had different looks. Yes. Looks of Christ. And this one was a he was angry because of their disbelief. He was grieved for the hardness of their hearts. And um, the second look of Christ is look of recognition and oneness. Look round about as at them which sat above him, along him. Look of recognition and oneness. Look round about on them which sat about him. That's found in Mark chapter 3, verse 34. Uh, 34. And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my father, my, not father, my mother and my sister, wait a minute, read it now, I'll put my mask on. 
Okay. And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. So that means, as apostle, Nicole, and myself, we become like his mother and his sister. Because she's sitting listening and, and having me read and I'm reading. So we're doing the will of his father by bringing forth the word of God to the listeners. Any saint doing the will of the Father is Jesus' mother and brethren and sister. Let's also go to John 2, verse 3. John 2, verse 2, verse 3. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Let's read for Jesus says to her, Woman, what have I to do with you? My hour is not yet come. Well, he had to look around to see what was available for him to use to make the water, the water turn into wine. He, he had to look around and out of curiosity, just to see, even though Jesus already knew what was a, about him. Um, look of inquiry. Inquiry, yeah. Encourage and encouragement. He looked round about to see her that had done this thing. Let's go to Mark 5.32. This one is about the woman with the issue of blood, I think. I'm sorry, what, what verse is? Um, um, Mark 5.32. What is it? Mark 5.32? Oh, no. Um, John, oh, wait a minute. You throw me off when you do me like that. Mark 5.32. Mark. And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. And that's the woman with the issue of blood. But the woman fearing and trembling Verse 33, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Jesus had that about him. People would tell him all the truth because he already knows what's in your heart. He knew what 
he know the he knew the woman did who did that. Touched them cause virtue went out of him, but he knew it was her, the lady, the woman. Let's go to, um, where, let me see, where we let to get to that? Let's go back to Mark 3, verses 34 and 35. Did I do that already? Mm -hmm. Okay, that ain't where I want to go at then. Mark eight thirty three. Mark what? Eight, chapter eight, verse thirty three. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples. He rebuked Peter, saying, Get you behind me, Satan, for you say were not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Because Peter had a nerve to rebuke the Lord. I don't know what he was thinking, but he wasn't thinking clearly. He didn't have a clear thought on that one. Um, what book is that? Mark 8, chapter 8, verse 33. No, what book is it? Just in, inquiry? Inquiry. Um, let me see. Because it wasn't encouragement. No, but when he had turned about and looked, on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, he made a statement. You know how you, um, you're, you're not angry, angry, but you're angry, slightly angry, if I could put it that way. Okay. But you're giving me different looks. Oh. So I'm asking, what look was he making? You didn't give us the title. Curiosity, I guess. Puzzlement. I believe Jesus looked at him puzzled, that he would try to rebuke him. The, uh, Puzzlement and with authority, an authoritative look. Okay. <coughs> okay, where's my next one? Look of discouragement. That's, uh, let's turn to Mark 10, verse 10. 23. 10, 33. Oh, that one comes to the fig tree? No. Okay, say it. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered to the chief priests and to the scribes and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. What look at that? 
that one thing I think that was a misprint that one discouraged the fourth row of twenty oh thirty two wait a minute I went to wrong I had read it back backwards um mark ten twenty three big oh. difference big difference ain't it <laughs> And Jesus looked round about and said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Uh, we're going to do 24 and 25. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and says to them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Um, hardly. Because their, their focus is not on entering into the kingdom of God. Their focus more on in, um, their riches. Like the young rich ruler, he had many, many um, possessions. And Christ was offering him a chance to enter into the kingdom of God. But he, his mind focus was on his riches because he didn't want to give them up. Because he had so many, so much, many. So that's the way I believe. That's the way this is going down right here about that. Uh, the rich man, the rich, whoever rich. And I read that the eye of the camel is where the the the, the camels has to get down on their knees. And crawl like and to go into the um the holding pen wherever they holding them at. That's the eye of the needle. That's what I read. I thought that was amazing. I didn't know a, a camel could crawl. Okay. Let me see. Look of stimulus. Jesus looking upon them said, With God all things are possible. That's Mark 10, 27. 10, 27. And they were astonished out of measure saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? I'll do 27 too. And Jesus looking upon them said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Amen to that. I'm glad all things are possible with God. That's the look of stimulus, astonishment. Well, um, I'm looking at not just um, the look, but mm. the surrounding conversation. He looked at them to stimulate their minds. 
oh, to let them okay. know that, look, what I said with men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So that they're letting you know it is <coughs> it is possible for rich men to enter in. Yeah. Even though it was based off of um, the camel and the needle of an eye. Right? Uh-huh. Because that's an impossible thing to us. Yeah, it is. But when I first um, started looking at that, I, I said, a needle. I'm looking at the natural needle mm -hmm. that you sew with. Mm -hmm. But it's not that. It's the doorway to, to the, um, the camera going into the holding pen. All right, the next one is look of inspection. That's marked 1111. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple and when he had looked round about upon all things and now the evening was come he went out to Bethany with the twelve Look of inspection. Inspection. I guess it was looking around. He was looking around inside the temple. And then let's read verse thirteen. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if hardly find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for the time of the figs was not yet. I put seeing as looking. When you're seeing something, you're looking at something. But what got me was with this was, now Jesus knew that the, it wasn't time for the figs, the figs to be on the bush. Just the leaves. But he cursed it anyway. So we must be careful. I took it as this. We must be careful on what we are looking at. What we seeing. If we don't want to be rebuked by Jesus. And as we go, wait a minute. Look of reproach. The Lord turned and looked upon Peter. This is uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 61. 22. 
think I do what? <laughs> Excuse me, my And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows, you shall deny me thrice. Here go Peter. As we read in Mark, he rebuked the Lord. And now he seemed to have amnesia or something like that. He had to remember what the Lord had told him. That he was going to deny Christ. Three times. Here is a man been walking with Jesus. He knew Jesus. For three years he walked with Jesus. He knew Jesus. And then he going to turn around. And he remembered. Oh. Like. Slapped himself upside the head. Oh I remember. That the Lord said I was going to do this. I wonder. If we were to face something similar to that. I wonder would we. Forget we know Jesus too. Get amnesia all of a sudden. I pray that we never do that. Do such a thing as that. If you're reading and walking with Jesus every day, I don't see how you, you would do that. Unless you get one of those dementia or, or Alzheimer's disease or whatever. And that's the only reason, only way I can see you forgetting Something like that, I guess. Well, well, that that was just a thought. Uh, well, this this message wasn't that long. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. With that, it is the conclusion. Of the um of the message and I pray that someone besides me got something out of this of the different looks of Christ. I was like astonished when I was I never looked at the different looks of Christ. You know how you read something? Okay. It go in the back of your mind like okay, I'm gonna remember that. A look. The looks tell a story. Depends on how you look at a person. Like those um, non-believers you out there witnessing to. They're looking at your face. Your facial expressions. How you delivering. If you got joy and peace. Or love in your heart. Or all of that. They, they're reading you like. You witnessing to them, they're reading you to see if what you're saying is actually true. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for opening up my eyes even more so. Mm -hmm. And I pray, Lord, that you will touch the hearts and minds of the people who will hear this message to stop and think. How would Jesus handle this situation mm -hmm. so we can give off a sweet-smelling Savior? 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That was Prophetess King in her message on the looks of Christ within the life of Christ. And that was interesting to <coughs> learn his different looks at different times. His look of anger, his look of recognition and wonder, his look of inquiry and encouragement, his look of puzzlement and authority, his look of discouragement, his look of stimulus, his look of inspection, and his look of reproach. I pray that you were blessed and that the Lord walk with you and be with you. Amen. In the name of Christ and, and in his love, peace and blessings with the Holy Ghost covering you, Apostle Reddick.